Hey everyone, Ryan from eBike Escape, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Unirro Defender S dual motor, dual suspension, electric bike. So let's get into it. Before we get started with the walk around, if you are looking to purchase a Unirro electric bike, be sure to check out the link in the description. You can save 3% off your purchase. It also is a free and easy way to help support eBike Escape. Thanks in advance for your support. We'll also put links to our electric bike accessories list, top eBike brands page, and finally our electric bike discounts code page where we track all the deals on the electric bike brands that we follow. With that, let's check out this beast of a bike. This is the Unirro Defender S. And if you're wondering, this is the 17 inch model. They also sell it in a 19 inch. And keep in mind when you're watching the third person riding footage towards the end of the video, I'm six feet tall with a 32 inch inseam. I actually thought this size would be a little bit small for me, but I'm able to get full leg extension and it feels pretty good. Now this is a dual motor electric bike and we'll get into all the components, but I just wanna highlight the weight at 84 pounds and they note a total weight capacity of 440 pounds, which is almost unheard of based off of a lot of electric bikes that I've personally seen. Now really, if you're looking at this electric bike, the biggest selling point is going to be the dual motors. So last year we reviewed their fat all-wheel drive. They don't actually have a specific model name for it. That has a 350 watt motor and a 250 watt motor, which I thought was plenty powerful. And then when they announced this bike on an Indiegogo campaign, I almost couldn't believe the specs because they packed in two Bafang 750 watt motors that I have to imagine are peaking much higher than that. Of course, we'll give this a full test in our first person riding footage. We can see the front motor there. We'll give you a look at the cables as well. They give you this nice cable wrapping so we're able to make it look a little bit nicer here and zip tie the cable so as not to interfere with the wheel. So you have the motor cable coming in on the right side of the bike here. And then on the other side, let's take a look at these brakes, 180 millimeter rotors. These are hydraulic disc brakes. I don't see any branding on them, but they feel really nice and of course, with how much power this thing pulls, you're gonna want the hydraulic brake, so really appreciate that. Of course, with the motor up here, you have a bolt-on front axle, and while I'm not an engineer, there are no torque arms here, but they're using this relatively beefy RST guide front fork, 75 millimeters of travel according to the Unirro website. And also with the fork, we have a left side preload adjustment here, as well as a lockout on the right side. And I'll actually give you an idea of what you can expect from that front suspension here. Now this is a front coil suspension, but in my opinion, this feels pretty good. Especially while you're riding on trails, you'll get a closer look of us actually taking this out on some single track, so stay tuned for that. And one thing I forgot to mention is price. This bike is currently priced at just under $3,000. Of course, the Dual motors definitely add to that price tag and just the overall uniqueness of this bike. There's really just not a lot of bikes like this on the market today. Now it is a fat tire bike. We have Kenda tires, 26 by four inch. They have some tread here for off-roading and really that's where this bike shines. I'll talk about it a little bit more later, but the dual motor traction is pretty much unparalleled. There's just nothing that this bike can't do and in winter, I've found that the dual motor electric bikes are very capable as well and tons of fun. 
They do give you a front integrated light. This is listed as a 40 lux light on their website. But perhaps if you're taking this out in the woods, you might want some external lights as well, just to improve your visibility. And I talked a little bit about the cable wrap down below, but we were able to get these cables looking pretty nicely, especially when you consider that they have an extra motor cable. We have the Unero branding here, their logo on the head tube here, Defender S branding on the down tube, and Unero on the top of the top tube. Really like the orange accents, this is the gray color. Let's move on to the front of the bike. We have Unero branded hydraulic disc brakes. Again, they feel really nice, not sure if these are branded from a different company, but really like these. And of course you have the motor cutoffs as well. So as soon as you hit those brakes, it's going to cut power to the motor. We have matching Unero locking grips here, a left-hand thumb throttle. And if you're used to electric bikes, you'll notice that this is something new. So this actually controls what motor you're using. And so if it's in the middle here, it's going to use both motors. And when the switch is left, that's going to be the rear motor only. And if you switch it all the way to the right, that's going to be the front motor only. And what was a lot of fun testing out, even with the other model, is switching between these motors because you can really feel the difference when you're just using one motor compared to both. All right, let's turn on this display here. Nice left-hand color display. I do have the brightness on it turned all the way up. And I wouldn't say it's the easiest display to read in the sunlight, but it's not terrible. You do have various modes of pedal assist, zero, one, two, three, four, and five. And we have kilometers per hour in the top left hand, but I'm actually gonna go ahead and change that quick. To get into the advanced settings, you just double tap the power button here. And this is where I change the brightness. We'll go into system here and change it from metric to imperial. And there's some other settings in here as well that you can scroll through. Auto off, wheel size, and advanced, and factory settings. But generally, you don't really need to go in here to change any settings. And we do have a odometer in the bottom right hand side and a percentage on the battery. Really like seeing the percentage as opposed to simply the bars. And pushing the power button once is going to give you your trip information, which you can clear out, as well as your time. So having this display on the left side opens up some room here for accessories, perhaps a phone mount or perhaps a rechargeable light, or maybe if you're taking this bike hunting, there's some other accessories that you'd put up here. They do give you an included bell. And I should note that at least with mine, they included this Unero hat. On the right side, we have a Shimano Acera trigger shifter, thumb going down gears and trigger back here going up gears. Now Shimano Acera is a step up from a lot of the super entry level components you see on many electric bikes. And we'll talk about the rear derailleur, which actually isn't an Acera in a little bit. And the cables come in on the right side of the battery here. Keyhole here for locking the bike. The battery can be charged both on and off the bike. Here is the charger port here. And if you're wondering what this is, this is actually how you install a secondary battery on this bike. So the bike comes with a 14 amp hour integrated battery, which I'll show you here in just a second. But you can also upgrade to the 17 amp hour integrated battery. And then if you want to, you can also add a 14 amp hour battery, which mounts right here. And then of course, plugs in right here. Now with the dual motors, if you're really using them a lot, you're really going to chew through that battery. So if you're already spending $3,000 on this electric bike, I would strongly recommend you at least consider upgrading at least to the 17 amp hour pack or going with the dual 14s because if you're taking this on long trips, you'll certainly appreciate it. All right, I'll go ahead and take the keys here and remove the battery. Now they do have this battery cover here that kind of keeps the bike looking nice and clean. So that's the cover that goes on outside of the bike. And then you have this 14 amp hour battery, as I was talking about, has a little handle so you can carry it a little bit easier. Now, something to note that I've been talking with Unero about is I haven't been able to get the battery to click in here without falling out, without the cover actually attached. So put any updates on the screen about that. 
go ahead and put the battery back. Make sure it is secure. Let's move on to the rest of the bike. Now looking here, you would almost think that this could be a mid-drive electric bike, but this is actually where the controller is and all the cables kind of managed here. So looks nice and clean. Very simple metal pedals that we see on many electric bikes. Kickstand mounted towards the rear, so no chance of those pedals coming in contact with it. Let's take a look at this suspension. So this is an EXA suspension, rear suspension, again, a full suspension bike. And here it says super light air sprung hydraulic damping. So this isn't a brand that I'm familiar with, but there is some adjustment here and I'm actually pretty impressed by how this rear suspension feels. It's actually the best rear suspension that I've personally felt on the electric bikes that I've reviewed. I'll go ahead and step on the bike so you can get an idea of what the rear suspension looks like. And of course, it can be easily adjusted. So I can have the bike very soft as you can see here, and I can turn this knob the other way and it becomes more stiff. So really like that adjustability. And to further adjust this, you can add air over here on the right side of the rear suspension. Very simple saddle on the Unirow Defender S. It is branded Unirow. Check out our electric bike accessories list if you're looking for something a little bit more comfortable. We have a very simple battery operated rear light. Remember the front light is integrated. Here's a look at the rear of the bike with those hydraulic disc brakes, as well as the second Bafang 750 watt motor. Now we had that Acera shifter up front, but then in the rear, we have a Shimano Altus rear derailleur. Definitely a component we see on many budget priced electric bikes. In our experience, it gets the job done just fine. If you need to make adjustments, you can use the barrel adjuster here. Now in the rear, we have 11 to 34 teeth. And in the front of the bike, we have a 44 tooth front chain ring. It is single sided, so offers some protection. Now, as we'll talk about more in the first person riding footage, we'll talk more about the gearing. This is something you might wanna change on this electric bike to a larger chain ring so you can provide more power at faster speeds. Here's the motor cable running along this bike. Now there is no chain stay protector here. So I'm actually gonna put some of our clear 3M tape to protect this frame. You can actually see it has a little bit of chips just from us riding this bike off-road. Again, this is the medium size frame, 17 inch. All right, that concludes the walk around of the Unirow Defender S dual motor, full suspension electric bike. Let's get into some first person riding footage and see what this bike can do. All right, let's get into some first person riding footage on the Defender S. So what we're gonna show you is throttle only going through pedal assist. And then we're gonna do the hill climb test. And then I'll kick it over to JT, who's gonna take this bike on some single track. Just to note, I do have the tires at 20 PSI and I did change the setting in here to 48 volts. It appears that that might have mistakenly be been set to 36 volts uh, from the factory. And I also did go ahead and override the speed here to whatever these motors will really give us. I think it came with a limit of 45 kilometers an hour. Just be sure that you're following all local laws and regulations. This bike doesn't really fit into a classification with two motors. Again, a class two e-bike has a throttle, top speed of 20 miles per hour, 750 watt single motor. So this bike has dual motors. So definitely going to be pushing the limits of what's allowed legally on the road in most states. So be sure to follow all local laws and regulations. And of course, have fun with this off-road and just be aware that this bike is not for the faint of heart. I have one of my safest helmets on, the Burn Hudson helmet that has the NTA 8776 rating and MIPS, and I should probably almost have my motorcycle helmet on. Anyway, let's get started with the test. I have it in dual motor, again, with that switch in the middle, and we'll see what this bike can do. Speedometer at by Cool Nix is going to check our speed. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, throttle and so much power, 17, there's 20 miles per hour already, 27, 29, 30, 31, 32, 
and it looks like 33, 34. Wow. I don't even really like going that fast, uh, to be honest. I'm not very much of a adrenaline junkie. Let's go ahead throttle only in the rear motor. Definitely feel a lighter takeoff there. I'm just curious what the top speed is. And I did start this test with 90% battery. So there's 25 miles an hour, 26, 27, 28. And I think that's gonna be it. Oh, there's 30. So definitely capable even with that single motor. I guess we'll go through the uh, pedal assist modes next, maybe in the rear motor only. Uh, right now I'm in sixth gear, going about 16 miles an hour, pedal assist one. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist two. And we're pretty quickly going to run out of gear, gearing since it isn't geared super high. Seventh gear, eighth gear, getting a little bit of a workout going 22 miles an hour. Pedal assist two. All right, turn this corner, we'll go into pedal assist three here. Don't feel too much additional power between two and three. Still going about 22 miles an hour and eighth gear feels pretty comfortable. Leisurely cadence, but still putting in some effort. Pedal assist four here, again, one motor. 26 miles an hour. Definitely legs are starting to spin a little bit more. 24 miles an hour. This bike just feels very planted, I would say, when you're riding it. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist five. And that's really due to the front wheel and the motor up there adding so much additional weight. Definitely want to be a confident rider on this bike. Pedal assist five, ninth gear. And again, I'm still able to uh, provide some effort. So to be honest, I'm impressed. 26, 27 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and step it up to both motors. Oh yeah, feel some extra power there. Legs are definitely spinning. And of course, we're gonna hit that 30 miles an hour and even faster. And it is very windy. We're going against the wind now. So obviously that's going to give you all the motor power that I showcased before. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist one with both motors here. Could probably shift down a little bit here. Eighth gear. Maybe even seventh gear, pedal assist one with both motors. Pedal assist two, seventh gear. Gonna go to eighth gear here. Pedal assist three, we were going 22 there. Now we're going 24, 25. Pedal assist four, shifting up to ninth. And there's 28 miles an hour or so. So pretty much this bike will do whatever you want it to. <laughs> All right, we are at 83% battery. Remember when I talked about buying the higher capacity battery? Highly recommend that. Okay, one thing I wanted to touch on just quickly is pedaling this bike with no power. And it should be no surprise that that's going to be pretty difficult. Uh, you can do it. I'm working on shifting down here, fourth gear. Uh, it's just such a heavy bike. Uh, I'm going about eight, nine miles an hour. This is pretty flat here but hills are just going to be not feasible at all. So if you run out of battery, it's gonna be a challenge. And certainly if you're on some trails or off-roading, going over lots of different terrain, that's gonna be difficult. Though you can shift all the way down into first gear, and that's actually uh, 32 teeth in the rear 
freewheel. That's going to be your smallest gear. I mistakenly said 34 teeth earlier. So uh, you can shift this all the way down. And I mean, maybe you can see on the camera, my legs are spinning a little bit. So you're just not going to get anywhere too fast. All right, with that, let's get into the hill climb footage. Okay, here we are at the hill climb test. This is the hill that we test out all of our electric bikes on. The GoPro makes it look much smaller than it is, so we'll throw up a picture of the hill and we'll also put the specs on the screen of the hill so you can get an idea of just how steep it is. And to be honest, this might be our best performing e-bike up this hill. I'm guessing I haven't uh, tested it out yet. Our first test will be throttle only. Also just wanted to call out in pedal assist zero, you do not get the throttle. So you do need to be in at least pedal assist one, though the pedal assist levels don't coincide with how much power you get from uh, the motor. All right, here we go. Throttle only up this hill. Get that front tire spinning. It is incredibly windy. Going about 30 right now. Hill's just starting. I believe we started the hill with about 82% battery. 27. 23. Just cruising up the hill, 22. Yeah, I don't think I've reviewed an electric bike that goes up this hill at a minimum speed of 22 miles per hour. Just shows the power of having two motors. Just pretty incredible. And we are just about to the top. 22 miles per hour minimum speed. And actually the display is reading a little bit lower, saying 20. Might be the wheel size in the settings of the display. Okay, not surprisingly, this bike just crushed that hill. Uh, I'd have to go look and see uh, what other bikes, maybe the Aerial Rider D-Class uh, did very well. That's a dual motor bike up this hill. Maybe we'll throw on the screen the minimum speed that that bike hit, just in case you're checking out other dual motor electric bikes. All right, now I'm gonna go back down the hill and I'll go up while pedaling, even though we're very, certain that this bike is just gonna fly up the hill. All right, hill climb test while pedaling. Just a note, according to the display, we're at 69% battery. And I believe when I started the hill climb test, we were around 82, 83%. So that just goes to show you how much power, if you're really using the throttle, again, up a, a huge hill, how much battery you're gonna go through on this electric bike. All right, I'm going to just use the throttle just to, for a second to get started. And uh, so I can get pedaling and shift down here. I'm going to uh, leave it in dual motor. I can uh, actually shift up here, fifth gear, pedal assist one. Feels pretty comfortable, leisurely pace, 14 miles an hour. And just to give you some frame of reference, going up this hill with a 750 watt motor that peaks higher um, throttle alone, usually 13, 14 miles per hour-ish. So just goes to show you how impressive it was with the dual motors. All right, uh, hill is really starting now, a little bit steeper, going about 11 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist two. Still in fifth gear, again, I feel like the power between one and two is not very much. Let's go into a pedal assist three. Again, I don't feel like the motor really taking off on me. 15 miles per hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist four. Shift up here, six gear. 16 miles an hour and pedal assist five. And of course that's gonna give us our full speed, full amount of power, eighth gear. And again, we're getting closer to that speed we saw on throttle alone. And the hill is just about over here. So I would personally, if you're looking at this electric bike or really buying any electric bike, definitely providing some help 
up the hills is going to conserve a little bit of battery. And of course, what's nice with this bike, you could put in one motor, shift all the way down, and just go up the hill a little bit slower so you can go on perhaps a longer ride, conserve range. All right, with that, let's throw it on to JT. He's gonna take this bike out on some single track. And then after JT is done, we'll do our third person riding footage and give our concluding thoughts on the Uniroad Defender S. And we couldn't complete this review without taking the Defender S out on some trails. So we happen to have some amazing mountain bike trails here in central Wisconsin. So we're in Ringel and uh, JT is going to take the Defender S and talk about how it performs on some single track. Yeah, I'll give you guys a little bit of feels of what I'm feeling in the rear end. The dual suspension on this is gonna be really, really nice. And uh, let's go see what it can do. All right guys, like Ryan said, we're out here at Ringel. We're gonna hit the short trail here, the short round and see, uh, see what this Unirow can do. All right, give it a little throttle to get off the line and then we'll start pedaling. Here we go now, this bike is, a little precursor here, bike is about 80 pounds. So it's definitely, that front motor does not uh, lend itself to uh, not being front heavy. So definitely, um, definitely something to be cognizant and aware of. Whew. Almost went down there. <laughs> definitely something to be cognizant and aware of that, that weight, you can really feel it in the front end. Um, but man, the fat tires really, really add some uh, traction for you here. It's really easy, especially with this bike being so powerful and having the dual motors so easy for you to just whip it into a turn and have it pull itself out if you're if you can get some pedal strokes in but uh you know other than that i mean even if even just on a little bit of power man this thing is the suspension super compliant soaking up the bumps it's really just moving itself through these turns and so here we go some downhill a little bit of uphill here make sure to look ahead give it a little pedal to get up here we go start pedaling I mean, this thing just pulls up hills. So while we don't think single track is really what this bike's intended for, which if you have land with some ruts or some, uh, some tight, twisty trails in it, this bike is definitely capable of getting there. You're gonna have to work a little bit harder to get it up and around those. Do just a little bit of pedal strokes and she just goes right up it. I mean, the Unirail really carries speed nicely. And man, she's got the, the torque and the power to pull you up all the hills you could ever want. Little bump there. Euro handles it with its dual suspension like a pro. There we go. And a little bit of break into the turn and then you can just kind of pedal through it to get you out of it. It's really handling this track like it's, it's nothing. Man, is it fun. You definitely are getting a little winded though from all that extra weight. So if you, we're gonna be doing this frequently and you didn't wanna have all that extra front weight, Definitely recommend the mid-drive. It's gonna be a little bit more balanced of a bike, but man, this thing is a beast out here. Look at her just go. There you go. Lean in, you've really got all that, you can lay into that traction on those fat tires. And whew, she just soaks up everything. A little bit of pump action here, get her through. Here we go, and here we are just about at the end. So hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of a uh, little bit of idea what the Unirail Defender S is capable of and shows you that if you did want to use it for a single track, you definitely could. So yeah, let's throw it back to Ryan for some more uh, footage. All wheel drive e-bikes are not new to me. It actually started with Unirail's fat all wheel drive bike, which is priced at $16.99. Even with one 250 watt and one 350 watt motor, that bike was impressive and tons of fun. It's what got me sold on all wheel drive e-bikes. So when the Defender S was first announced, I just couldn't imagine a more powerful e-bike with two 750 watt motors that peak at 1000 watts each. Suffice to say, I knew what I was getting into when I agreed to this review and the Defender S did not disappoint. This e-bike is an absolute blast and it's a bike best suited for experienced riders. While the Defender S doesn't really fit into any e-bike classification in the US, unless you're just using one motor, I have to imagine most will be buying this e-bike for its off-road capability. The dual motors, especially in snow, is something you have to experience for yourself. If you want a capable e-bike, this is it. 
At $27.99, it's not cheap, but Unirail has put together something that I just haven't seen on the market. A full suspension, full size, 26 by four fat tire e-bike with dual motors. It's super comfortable to ride and the rear suspension was surprisingly nice. The two piston brakes provide plenty of stopping power. There isn't much more to say spec wise. Perhaps it could use a bigger front chain ring to allow more human power at higher speeds. While the bike can be pedaled, it's just too darn fun to leave the bike in dual motor mode and use the throttle, which is why I again will reiterate my suggestion of opting for the larger battery or even the dual battery option. As demonstrated, this bike will handle any kind of terrain that you want to throw at it. The only downside of this e-bike is that it is understandably heavy. The beefy frame with the added weight of the motor up front make it noticeably different to steer. So those considering this e-bike will want to make sure they plan to use that front motor. If not, you can check out the wide variety of other Unirail fat tire e-bikes. For those taking this e-bike deep into the woods, maybe even taking it hunting, the optional rear rack and fenders are available for $149. So if you're looking for a thrill, the Defender S unquestionably delivers. This one will be sticking around the e-bike escape garage for obvious reasons and will be retiring the fat all-wheel drive model onto its next owner. If you're planning to purchase a Unirail electric bike, be sure to check out the link in the description to save 3% on your purchase and also help out e-bike escape. It's worth noting Unirail has been selling e-bikes for a number of years, has some dealers around the US with their own office in Las Vegas. They also work closely with Bafang. Let me know in the comments if there are other models you'd like us to review from Unirail. I'm particularly interested in the Spectre S mid-drive with 3-inch mountain bike wheels. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, leave the camera. Don't touch it, okay? I'm going to ride past you.